Let's go to the other techniques, namely generic programming and uh, <coughs> model trees. Now, uh, you may be aware of genetic algorithms, genetic programming share the concept uh, of a genetic algorithm as far as the uh, Darwinian principle of survival of the fittest is concerned. They are also based on the same. But uh, unlike, they, they are similar to genetic algorithms, but uh, in the end they, end, they give you a computer program or an equation. Uh, uh, when we say computer program, it is an algorithm involving uh, various operations, if, then, else and so on associated with any computer algorithm. Now, because of that, uh, genetic programming is more suitable to determine the input-output dependency structure. That means to carry out regression rather than to carry out optimization as in the case of uh, genetic algorithm. Now, basically what is done in uh, genetic programming, you have what are called functions and terminals. Now, what we mean by functions are typically, let us say, the causative uh, parameters like say the, uh, uh, the radius of ski jump bucket, the uh, leap angle, the discharge head, etc. And what we mean by terminals are mathematical operators or logical operators like plus, minus, multiplied by, divided by, logarithm, if, then, else, do and things like that. So innumerable combinations of these function sets and terminal sets are done. The every time for a new combination, the strength of this combination is determined by applying fitness criterion, usually which is in the form of a root mean square error between the outcome that that particular combination produces and the actual output. And uh, uh, in that way, you go on finding out, uh, finding out the new combinations and ultimately end up with the fittest combination. That is the answer at the end of the genetic programming. Every time we formulate the new combination by doing the operations like uh, reproduction, mutation and crossover. Now let us see how in genetic operation, uh, genetic programming these operations are done. Suppose you uh, consider an ex equation or expression minus q plus root pi divided by 3p. Now we represent this equation in the form of a tree structure which is the basic you know uh, idea in this genetic uh, programming which differentiates it from the genetic algorithm. You have this equation minus q plus root pi divided by 3 into p. Minus q plus root pi divided by 3 into p. This is an equation which is represented in the form of a tree structure. Now, while there are two operations, uh, three operations rather, reproduction, crossover and mutation. What we mean by reproduction is just allowing the same expression to uh, continue uh, further in further processing. When we say crossover, it means that two random nodes will be selected from these two parents and the uh, result and the sub -tree trees will be swapped. For example, this is one node, this is another node of, of the, this parent and this parent. You put this sub tree here, this node here and you, you will get another expression. Find out the fitness of this and if they satisfy your fitness, uh, go ahead. Uh, so similarly, when we say mutation, again here one sub tree is replaced by another one randomly. For example, this is one subtree, you randomly replace by another subtree 2 into p like this and you will get another expression. So like that we can also play, these are all mathematical operators, but you can also play with uh, computer programs, uh, I mean the uh, logical operators and develop computer programs uh, accordingly. Now, uh, so what is the procedure that is followed in GP is like this. We select a random population of individuals which could be expressions, equations or computer programs. Then we evaluate the fitness of each individual and by, by evaluating the fitness we select parents for further processing. Then uh, the, these parents are made to yield offspring and other individuals by following the process of reproduction, mutation, crossover which we have seen. Then you continue the creation of offspring till a specified number of offspring in a population are produced and uh, till a certain number of generations of such populations are created. And the best offspring in the entire generation process is the solution of the problem. It need not be the last one. Uh, genetic programming actually started after its uh, presentation by COSA around the year 1992. There have been, but its application in water resources hydraulic started only in the year 1999. They have been used for various purposes like the classification, regression, uh, pattern recognition. That means given the partial information, find the full information and so on. 
typical applications are like this. These people have applied it uh, to rainfall runoff modeling to evaluate runoff from the given uh, input of rainfall at various rain gauges. Uh, people have also applied GP to estimate suspended solids in uh, water treatment plants. They also use GP to estimate the groundwater levels uh, to determine the settling of fecal pellets in uh, uh, wastewater management. They also use GP to obtain the resistance to open channel flow uh, because of vegetation, vegetation induced resistance. Then uh, in ocean science, uh, people have also applied this generative programming to evaluate certain ocean components uh, like this phytoplankton from the given information of sunlight, luminance and reflectance and so on. So these are some of the works which uh, people have done since 1999. Uh, you, uh, which involves application of GP. So this was a very brief exposure to GP. There are so many finer points which we have to learn uh, by going through the appropriate literature. Now similarly, let me give you the concept of model tree. This model tree is it represents a computation process, computational process in which we build uh, li piecewise linear models. We break the input region into different subdomains, and within each domain, we uh, build uh, multi um, uh, linear regression models. Now, so the input domain is divided into subdomains, and linear regression models are fitted into each. For example, consider this case. Let us say you have uh, two input variables x1 and x2, uh, y is the output variable. Now, uh, using the objective is like this this uh, input space of x1 and x2 is to be divided into so many sub regions using some kind of similarity criteria or some or, or in other words uh, this to say the same thing using some kind of elimination criteria and uh, having collected similar examples you fit linear models here and uh, use that as a uh, as a global model in the end to op, to answer any new query or to get the output from any new input <coughs> Typically, for example, see this, if, uh, if x2 is greater than x2, uh, is greater than 2, uh, then you follow this path. If it is not greater than 2, you follow this path. For example, if x2 is less than 2, then you further see if x1 is less than 4. For example, here is x2 is less than 2, then you see if x1 is less than 4. If it is not, then um, you, uh, if it is yes, if it is less than 4, then you fit one model, this model number 4. So for this model number 4, you have x2 less than 4 and x1 uh, less than 4, then you fit one linear model. Then if it is not so, then you further see if x2 is more than 1. If uh, x2 is more than 1, you fit this model 6 and if x2 is less than 1, you fit a model 5. Similarly, you follow other paths and identify the similar patterns and fit individual models in it. Now how to select these values? For that purpose, different there are different algorithms which use different criteria, but there is one algorithm called uh, uh, this uh, M5 model tree. It was given by, uh, it is something like a fifth, you know, it is just like Maruti 800 or something. So it is a fifth kind of trial uh, made by these people. So it is, uh, this was given by Quinlan and in, Quin, uh, in the, this model, uh, they have used the, a, vari a, a variant of standard deviation of the class value that reach, reaches a node or decision box uh, in, in relation to the standard deviation of the total data sets as a criterion. Similarly, there may be some other elimination criteria, but uh, standard deviation reduction uh, is a criterion which is found to be acceptable by uh, the, the past investigators yielding satisfactory results. Uh, so you go on dividing these things until you, you get uh, uh, those uh, you end up with getting those uh, points in your bins which have uh, a standard deviation say which is only say five times the five percent of the total standard deviation of that data and so on. So based on that uh, this uh, algorithm has been developed. Now there are two further uh, points that is noted to be noted with respect to the empty algorithms. Many times it is found that uh, if the splitting that you do uh, be, uh, becomes so large that overfitting occurs. That means there is the individual patterns are learn, learned, but there is no generalization that is carried out. In that case, you have to prune that large splitting by using some techniques which involve merging together of the few subdomains or sub uh, regions together. 
Another difficulty that people ha had noted earlier is that suppose there are very small number of training examples. In that case, what happens? Uh, there, there are large discontinuities between neighboring linear models and therefore in order to have a uh, smooth variation from one model to other, they have used certain mathematical functions which are called smoothing functions and uh, in, in MT, uh, application of MT procedure will uh, usually involve both this pruning, uh, pruning as well as smoothing, uh, smoothing methods. Now the advantage of the MT over other uh, approaches like a or OGP is that you can easily understand its outcome and uh, it can be very easily replicated or the results become highly portable compared to NN. Uh, but one th thing that is to be noted is that uh, ANN and GP are purely non-linear models. Uh, they, they, they don't involve any kind of assumption beforehand. Whereas uh, MT is piecewise linear and uh, it works, it assumes that it is possible to disintegrate the input space into uh, subdomains so that linear models can be applied to that subdomain. So in that way, it, it is not regarded as something which is a purely non-linear kind of uh, fitting technique. As regards the applications of model trees are concerned, again they have been applied mostly to similar type of problems as that of GP, genetic programming. Its applications have been reported since last only three years or so. Uh, people have applied it to evaluate the rainfall run relationship, they have used it to apply the, to come up with reverse stage and discharge relationship or the rating curves. They have also come up uh, with uh, studies which estimate the sediment transport in open channel flows. In, uh, they have also predicted the values of the flood uh, discharges, uh, dis river discharges during flood. Uh, people have also compared this technique of model tree with the technique of artificial neural networks and they find that the results of model trees are either similar to that of ANN or sometimes they are shared better than that of ANN. Similar results we also found in our uh, application pertaining to wave analysis. And uh, for example, this uh, Bhattacharya and Solomata, and so in fact, the, uh, there is one investigator named uh, Dimitri Solomata in Delft who has been very actively pursuing this technique. Uh, many of his students have used this technique and they are saying that uh, they are finding it, it is either uh, similar to ANN or it produces results which are marginally better in some cases than ANN. But where will it work and where will it not work is very difficult to say uh, beforehand. Uh, sometimes they are finding that higher river flows or low river flows are better uh, approached by model trees whereas middle level, uh, middle range values they are better predicted by other techniques like N and so on and so on. Uh, 